How do you choose between all the different soft plastics for bass fishing? We're going to talk about that. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Fish Talk. Unfortunately, I'm out of coffee, but I do have five minutes on this time of year, and you know what that means. Boop, it's time to get real. Today, we're talking about soft plastics and how to choose between all the different varieties out there on the market. My friends, there's thousands of options out there, and that's why it can be pretty intimidating to choose just one while you're on the water. That, my friends, is exactly why we're talking about this subject. First and foremost, I do want to shout out Dan Kruger, who actually commented this on a post of mine on Facebook and gave me this topic suggestion. If you ever have a topic suggestion, drop a comment below, send me a direct message, whatever. I'd be happy to try to consider it. Regardless, let's get into today's topic. Here's the deal. When I'm out there on the water trying to choose between different soft plastics, I go through a list of considerations, really in no particular order, but I go through these considerations and as I think about them, I can more effectively choose a plastic and I start catching more fish. So the first one that I would consider, and again, really in no particular order here, is how dirty is the water. So if the water's really dirty, you might want a little bit more flap to the plastic. What I mean by that is you want a little bit more vibration. Create some disturbance down there because you want to appeal to that bass's lateral line. A bass has many senses, but one of those is a lateral line, and what that does is it allows the bass to pick up on vibrations underwater, and they can hone in on your bait that way. Now, if it's clear water, you probably want to appeal more so to a bass's eyesight, and you might use something a little bit more natural that doesn't have quite as much action, because you probably don't need that flap. Now, while on this topic, though, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be clarity. It could just be low light conditions. If it's really cloudy out, that's pretty similar uh, to a degree to dirty water. The other thing is, if it's really windy, you might also want to bump up the, the, the flap so that way you can get them to hone in on it. It's kind of like a spinnerbait in windy conditions. Think about it that way. The next thing that I might consider is what type of forage are these bass eating? Are they eating bluegill, shad, crayfish? What are they eating? Because if they're eating a little three inch bluegill, which of these baits are going to work better? Well, I would probably go with this little craw because this is a little bit more bulky and it might resemble a little bluegill trying to escape, whereas this big worm probably doesn't look quite like a little tiny bluegill. Not to say it won't work, but I'm saying that this one probably will work a little bit better. So that's another thing I consider. The other thing that I actually consider is deep water versus shallow water. And again, taking it back to this example, you know, this three inch plastic with big flapping claws versus this 10 inch worm with a, a, you know, a ribbon tail, which one's going to perform better in deep water? For me, it's the ribbon tail worm because what it's going to do is be able to get down to the deep water quicker. And so you're going to be able to fish more efficiently with it. And then just the way it swims is probably going to resemble a shad and create a reaction, reaction bite better than a craw. I really just haven't had a lot of luck with flap and craws offshore. I really don't fish with something with a lot of flap much deeper than 5 to 10 foot of water. A ribbon tail in that situation still creates a lot of disturbance down there, but it does it in a way that doesn't take super long for it to glide down to the bottom. I know that that probably doesn't make a ton of sense, but that's more just experience on the water at that point. Now, the next thing that I'm going to consider is what type of cover am I fishing? If I'm fishing big open water, something like this is going to work just fine. But if I'm fishing really, really, you know, a lot of cover, if I'm fishing a lot of branches, tree branches, brush piles, this probably won't work as well. Why is that? Let's pretend that's a tree branch. A lot of times these big ribbon tail worms can get caught on stuff. It's got such a long body that it gets stuck on stuff super easy. So I'm not going to flip this up in dirty, nasty cover. On the flip side, flip side, I will actually throw this a lot more because what that does is it can come through tree branches very effectively. It can swim down there. It can create reaction bites. It's got a lot of flap. Um, and again, something like this as well. This is like a punch craw and you can punch it in there. It's going to slide through vegetation very effectively. Um, whereas some of the, the bigger creature baits might not be able to get through there quite as easily. Now, again, if we're talking about, you know, vegetation cover, you know, if I'm talking offshore vegetation, that's where stuff like this, big creature baits, big ribbon tail worms are going to come into play. Now, I know that I probably didn't answer this 100%, but I think one of the main things to consider out there is there's really not a right answer. It's not to say that you can't throw a ribbon tail worm in shallow water. I've done it a thousand times. It's not to say that you can't throw a soft plastic craw offshore. You definitely can. Trust your gut out there. Get experience with different types of soft plastics. Take your time. Try to get better with each one. And over time, you're going to develop confidence in certain baits. And you'll throw those in many conditions. And I feel like if you have confidence in a bait, you're much, much more likely to catch fish on it. So take everything a little bit with a grain of salt, but hopefully this helps you on the water next time. Regardless, I said what I need to say. If you want to watch another video of mine, 
I'd appreciate it if you click right there. I think you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, you know what I'm going to say next, right? Have yourself a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll catch you next time.